for me, art is a form of artifice and it's make believe. You know, so if I want to mix sort of, you know, 19th century with uh, medieval, um, you know, I can do that as an artist because I'm taking you to places that don't exist anywhere in the first place. I don't see myself as trying to tell, you know, some kind of truth story. I mean, in a way, actually, you know, with art, you know, it's the biggest kind of lie ever. I grew up in Lagos and I, my interest in art began there. And I used to go to children's art workshops at the weekend. And, you know, and I did see the works of a lot of Nigerian artists when I was, um, when I was young. Then I came to art school, you know, uh, in London. And my idea of art sort of changed. I guess I had exposure to, you know, pop art, conceptual art, um, you know, the kind of art I'd never seen before, performance art. And then, you know, I started to actually relate history, philosophy uh, to the making of art. My work got very political in my second year, and I was making work about perestroika, which is what was happening in Russia at the time. You know, and one of my teachers said to me, you know, why are you making work about what's going on in Russia? Why aren't you making authentic African art? And so the whole question around the issue of authenticity actually began from that point on. And I wondered what stereotypes were about and, you know, uh, where do we get this idea that something has to be authentic? And then, you know, that's where my question around that issue began. History itself, we know, is very subjective anyway. And history is always written from the point of view of the people with power. And, and that then is uh, put forward as the authentic point of view. Um, but of course, we all know that it's all about power. That's what history is. 19th century interiors, for me, evoke a kind of colonial era. And, you know, so in a way, there is a kind of intrusion that I like into those spaces. It's almost like trying to reverse time. Uh, because I perhaps wouldn't have been allowed to go into those places or even, you know, eat in those places or socialize in those places. I'm now able to actually enter those spaces and in a way talk back to that history. And I think that's what my work is doing. It's sort of trying to have some kind of conversation with that relationship, you know, my own, my own history and my own background. You know, how do I speak back? I was exploring Oscar Wilde's uh, picture of Dorian Gray, but I also wanted to touch on the issue of uh, mortality, uh, the body, and the first work in which I explicitly explored my own physical disability too. Uh, and um, and I felt that that story um, was a you know was a good story to explore. And I think within the art world, there's a kind of Jim Crow thing that kind of goes on. You know, there are places you're supposed to go to, there are places you're not supposed to go to. And I refuse to do that, you know. I can go anywhere I like. Um, I can go, I can touch any part of um, art history. And I don't feel that I have to kind of, you know, go back to a village in Africa or something, you know. I mean, I can do whatever I like. All of this stuff is about, it's political stuff about agency, you know. And I think, you know, it's great to to know and to see the works of, um, you know, Carl Walker, Fred Wilson, you know, over the years. And it's a kind of empowerment that artists have only been able to have, I would say, probably in the, in the past maybe 50 years, if that. But it's great that, that a lot of artists, you know, of African origin, African-American artists are actually, you know, taking control of their own expressions and, they're, they're, and also interrogating that sort of uh, violent and oppressive history. You know, but we've got a long way to go. I mean, you know, I think so. I think that actually, you know, we're only just getting started.